Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in Automation, the car company tycoon game with another how-to and today's topic is how to set up the timing and in general the fuel system for your specific application with the recent changes to how timing works. Alright, let's get right into it. And here we are, we have a bog standard 1962 engine 2 liter inline 4 overhead cam 3 valve with a uh, very modest cam profile of course no turbo there was no turbo and then we have a twin carburetor eco setup N performance intake what the hell nope that was not supposed to be there and uh, i think yes a short cast uh, this is all set up reasonably well but let's take a quick look Oh yeah, yeah, we, we still have a bit of Ron left and we were supposed to talk about timing. So what does timing do in this case? Well, the tooltip does give you a hint here. If you are using carburetors, then you can only choose one timing. That is a pretty nifty feature of fuel injection systems, modern ones, computer controlled fuel injection systems or just fuel systems in general uh, which are computer controlled that you no longer have to tune them for a specific RPM but it can adapt over the course of the or over the whole RPM range and also according to current throttle position. For old carbs you will have to choose one timing and this timing setting will move around a bulge of uh, efficiency or rather torque in that case and that will be centered around the rpm number given to you here rpm power peak and that is not the absolute power peak and you don't have to set it to wherever you peak in power but rather where you want to have your main bulge of efficiency and you can see that it slightly changes um well if we're not starting to knock let's lower the compression slightly more and now we have it at 4500 you can see it yeah 5000 that's right at the end there compare that to having it further down low this lowers it's it's hard to see but that's why i'm explaining it here to you Okay, so now the bulge actually is at 2500 RPM, which is pretty accurate. We have it at 2500 RPM here versus oh, a completely different torque curve when we have it here. It still says it's at 2700 RPM and overall it's actually higher. But if you lower your timing, you will be able to pump in a lot more compression into your engine, which will then again lift the overall torque curve. So it's really about moving this bulge to where you want to have a good amount of efficiency. If you are making an eco engine, then you want to have it between like 2000 and 3000 so that you have a good response down below and you have good acceleration up to a higher engine speeds. If you are making a performance engine, you will want to have it around 5000, I would think, and probably not going too high. 5000 would be at 60. That is pretty good. If you're making a real, like, real high-end engine for early days, then sure, set it at 80 or something. And right now we're knocking, but there we go. Uh, this is not, like, this has shifted the power bulge to an area where we are not even revving to right now. So let's just make a, a quick little setup for an economical engine. Let's put it at a fuel mixture of a very, very lean or stoichiometric to be exact 14.7 to 1 and lower the ignition timing we have our single barrel eco carbs uh, set up all right yes we are not strangled whatsoever by them and i want to put them at 2500 maybe 3000 to have a little bit more mid push and now i can adjust the compression accordingly and then we see what engine we end up with. As we said in our previous tutorial uh, with the exhaust tuning I've now chosen to actually strangle it a little bit up high in order to get a better efficiency in the uh, relevant part down here. 
And so now I'm, I'm quite satisfied with our eco engine. It has a really high fuel efficiency for being a 1962 engine on pretty simple tech. And yeah, tuning overall pretty much spot on. Uh, can we eke out a little bit more here? Yes, it looks like it. You still want to maximize uh, the timing within what you have planned because raising the overall timing level here still increases engine efficiency overall if you can fit it into your octane rating so please do that we were able to squeeze another three timing into this and this benefits the whole torque curve but of course it also shifts your focus slightly upwards because we now have this uh, very neat um, eco engine, we now hold the engine and now we start building our performance variant or more performance tune of this one. For that, I think I'm going to choose, uh, let's see, can we rev this higher? Oh yes, we can. We can rev this a lot higher. So let's choose a different setup here. Like cam profile of 50-ish? Yeah, sounds about right. It is revving to 5,800 now, and now we have a little, because of the higher cam profile, we have a little headroom here for a higher ignition timing as well. So if we use this and actually shift the peak, we don't want to shift it too far. You can see how it reacts here, so it gets happy here. We're passing there, oh, we start knocking there. 4,800, if we are doing maximum power at 5,200, that is a pretty good setting because you don't want to push the bulge too far beyond where you want to rev. Uh, if you push it beyond or to peak power, then half of it, half of the bulge you have worked so hard to get in there actually is pretty much useless. Uh, or well, only in racing application where you rev beyond peak power for optimal acceleration times. But now, yeah, you can see here, maybe we even want to shift it a little further down, 4,200. Yeah, I would, I would say, like, aim, aim around here, a few hundred below your peak power if you're on carbs. That is a good compromise if you're going for uh, peak performance. And, well, you see the difference. Now we are at 15.3 uh, fuel efficiency compared to 17.5. It's really taken a bite out of this range here. But overall, we have a higher torque number. It is more efficient up here in the mid-range. But uh, before that, so for direct comparison, right now we are at 152 Newton meters at 3,300 RPM. And before we were at 146 at 27. But let's take a look at what we have at 27 right now. And that would be 144. So it is at that point, it is less efficient right now than it was before. And that is still with an exhaust that is strangled. So that will change now. <laughs> Let's see. So we open up the exhaust slightly and now take another look. Uh, now at 2700, we are actually just at uh, 142 instead of 146. So yeah, we have, especially down here, have lost a lot of efficiency. You can see it from this number, 14.9% versus the 17.5 we had previously. And now I'm going to switch back. Hold engine, abandon, held engine, no, revert to held engine, and flop. Yes, you can see this is a much more even torque curve. Of course, a completely different application, but um, the ignition timing tuning definitely helps the case here. Overall, the higher you make it, the more peak efficiency you will be getting, but it will be shifted up in your rev range. For a fuel injected system with an ECU, this system works a little different. You don't have a power bulge because it is optimized for everything. So instead what you are going to do is to set this uh, tuning depending on what you want to achieve. 
uh, in a very little small band, then between about 65 and 80. I wouldn't go beyond that unless you're really, really in for the responsiveness rating of your engine, which would help your sportiness. Then you can push it higher. But the optimal efficiency is in that band between 65 and 80. And you have to wiggle it around a little bit because of the randomization of the torque curve and uh, depending on your ignition timing and fuel mixture and compression ratio. But what you would want to do is, for example, if you're making an eco engine, you set your ignition timing to about 70, you uh, set your fuel mixture to whatever you like, let's put it at stoichiometric once again, and then you adjust your compression accordingly until you're not knocking, and then you wiggle around a bit with your ignition timing until it actually fits the bill. And you see here like, oh yeah, okay, I'm losing and gaining a little bit. I, I don't really know if that's worth it. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm going to tink another 50 minutes before I, I, I make it, make it real good. Because this is so important, like half a Newton meter determines, determines my life. Two hours later. Yeah, I, I think this is the optimal setup I've reached now. This is really good and I think this is perfect. And really, that should be all about the ignition timing tuning and there's not much more to know about this one. Apart from, of course, the randomized nature of the torque curve is actually important here. There are a few bumps baked into it to make it look a little bit more realistic and that gets shifted around with the ignition timing. So just be aware that sometimes, sometimes you can actually get both more power and better efficiency by reducing your ignition timing by one step or two or for something like that. That can happen and uh, don't, don't freak out when it does. It's just a little bit of RNGesus working for you there. All right, guys, uh, that is all. And I hope it was useful and see you guys next time.